So we're going to look at the basics of turning your Google form into a quiz. Uh, you're welcome to open up a new form and follow along with me if you wish. Uh, the first thing that I want to point out um, may seem obvious, but uh, it's surprising how many people forget it. Um, anytime you're creating a quiz, you're going to ask the same three questions right off the bat. These are very important, and if you forget them, it will cause problems. So those three questions are, what is your first name? What is your last name? And then I would recommend, especially at the high school level, you know, what class period are you in? Um, and then list out the different classes. If you don't ask for their name, you won't know who to give the quiz grade to. Now, I recommend splitting the first and last name uh, questions so that you can sort the uh, spreadsheet that you'll get by last name that makes it very easy to enter that data into your grade book. So that's kind of your first setup, just again, first, last, and class period. You probably also want to include email address. It, it depends on what your purpose is. Email address uh, can serve two functions. Uh, first, you do have the ability to send students their grade if you collect their email address. The second reason that you may want to collect email is just to verify their identity. Uh, so this is going to be collected automatically because they're logged into their account. That will minimize the opportunity for someone to take a quiz for someone else or try to take it two times because the email address and the name should match one another. So nothing really fancy about those two things. Um, that's just what we're going to begin uh, with our quiz. Now it's optional, but I've gone ahead and created a section for the kind of uh, personal information. They fill that out, they click next, and that actually takes them into the, the quiz. Optional just kind of splits it into two very distinct areas. We're going to go ahead now and actually look at the quiz settings. I'm going to click on the uh, gear, the fidget spinner in the top right corner, and I'll work our way through these preferences. So here's our collect email address option. Um, that's up to you. And then um, I've gone ahead and clicked the limit to one response. That will prevent a student from taking it uh, twice. Um, Again, that would be for more of a summative assessment. If you click restrict to your district, your domain, that will automatically collect their email. They don't even have to type it in. So having these three things selected will really lock down your form to ensure that you know exactly who's taking it. They're only taking it one time. Um, it, it controls it. It's not foolproof, but it helps. Um, we're going to go ahead to the quiz tab now. This is pretty straightforward, but flipping this switch on is what will officially turn your form from an assessment or excuse me, from a survey into an actual quiz. We're going to turn that on and then you'll need to make some decisions about how you want the grades handled. Um, you can either do it immediately or after manual review. Um, if you decide to do immediate um, uh, immediately reveal the grades. You just need to be aware that if you do teach multiple classes, um, those grades, the, the answers to the questions are going to become known as the day progresses. So you may want to turn that off if you have, um, you know, a class at the beginning and then another class at the end of the day. You do have control over what information they can see. Um, and so you can turn on or off these uh, check boxes as needed. You know, if you want to give them their grade, but not anything else, I would uncheck all of these. All they're going to see after they take the quiz is, you know, they got six of 10 or eight of 10. That's it. They're not going to know what question they missed. They won't even be able to see the questions. It'll just be their grade. So based on the purpose of your assessment and how much security you think you need, uh, you'll need to toggle those uh, different options on or off. I'm going to leave it uh, all on just so you can see what that looks like. Um, I'm also going to turn off these so that you can take this quiz and see what that looks like um, here in a little bit. So that's the basic setup. Now we're going to go ahead and start adding our questions. So I just added some real basic questions. Here's a multiple choice question. Um, put my options in. Now that we've made this a quiz, you'll see a new option has appeared. So I can click on answer key. And this is where I go in and I actually specify which answer is correct. You'll notice that you can select more than one option. Um, and then you got to make sure that you change the point value up here as well so that they get credit for having that uh, complete. 
Now, the next part here is optional. It, it does require quite a bit of extra work. I wouldn't do this unless you're going to build in class time for students to actually look at this material, but you can add feedback for both correct and incorrect answers. So what you do is um, if the answer is incorrect, you can display this message and then even link to information. So in this case, a link to a NASA article that explains why the sky is blue. It's not worth doing all of that work unless you're going to actually ask students to review that information. Um, I did it just so you can see what it looks like. Um, I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to use that feature. I have also decided to use emoji for my correct answers. And then I link to a fun little uh, animated GIF um, as well. So you can play with it, but uh, just keep in mind that it's there, but you don't have to use that feature. Let's go down to uh, the next question. Um, so one way that you can significantly um, enhance the difficulty of your quiz questions is by using the checkbox option. So this would um, require a student to select all that apply. And then when I go to my answer key, I've selected in this case, three of the uh, five options uh, are mammals. Now, one thing you need to be aware of, Google Forms will only give the student the three points for this question if they correctly identify all three options. If they you know, select whale but not the other two, they don't get one point. They get nothing. So this is an all or nothing question. You can go in and manually change that if you want to. Um, just be aware that that's how that question works. Um, I've also added in a, a picture question. As you can see here, um, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing a picture question is um, you're not required to have anything in this box, um, but you want to um, because the pictures are not going to be displayed when a student gets their score report. And so you want to have, you know, at least option one, option two, option three in there. Same thing if you're looking at the data in a spreadsheet, if you don't actually give it a description, um, it's very hard to understand what that information means. Um, grading is the exact same for that. Now, I, uh, I added a variety of things in here. Um, this next section, I've gone ahead and used the title and description um, feature to um, put a, a reading passage in. So this is the Gettysburg Address. I just copied and pasted it. Students would read that and then use that information to answer uh, the question down below. This could also be a video or an image as well. So we're just using this to, um, uh, as reference for the bottom questions. Same uh, grading options down here. Just as a reminder, um, for multiple choice questions like this, if you click on the snowman in the bottom right corner, um, I would encourage you to turn on the shuffle option order feature that will um, randomize them, just makes it more difficult for our students to cheat. This last question is totally optional. I've actually never used this in a class. It's a pretty new feature of Google Forms. This allows a student to upload a file. Um, so let me show you what the uh, live version of this looks like. Um, it's it's pretty interesting. Um, I, I would not use this in a lot of instances, but the idea here is that a student, if they had a drawing or something that they had created, they could click add file and pick a file from their Chromebook or other device. Um, I did this uh, yesterday, I drew a little cell and I'll upload that as a um, you know, kind of a evidence of that I know what I'm talking about related to the cell. You could also make this a free response question or short answer question as well. Um, just give some accountability. If a kid is really good at taking multiple choice assessments, this um, takes it a step further to make sure they actually know what they're, uh, they're talking about. So that's a little overview about how to turn your quiz in or a form into a quiz. I'm gonna encourage you to go ahead and take my demo uh, quiz so that you can see from a student's perspective what it looks like when you get your grade and how that information is provided.